It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Movie Show. I'm Craig. You're not going to fool me with that. I'm Craig, he's Ryland. And uh, welcome back to another review show. We have got two pretty good tricks actually uh, this week and we have two ridiculously hype tricks that everyone's talking about. You're doing the stupid tricks and I'm doing the good tricks. Yeah, one of which is one of the worst tricks we've ever seen ever you in the entire like, history of this review you show. You have to be like 30 feet away from it. <laughs> yeah, and even then it doesn't look that good. Uh, let's start off by looking at one of the worst tricks released in 2021 so far. Okay, so the first review we have this week is Triple Helix by John Bing and Snake. Now, there has been a lot of hype about this on the forums. People are talking about it. Uh, apparently, it was released at Blackpool. I was at Blackpool 2020. I didn't see this. I spent about three days in the dealers. I didn't see this. But apparently, it was at Blackpool. But there's been demo videos and there's been, um, uh, there's been trailers coming out about this for the last few weeks. Everybody is uh, wanting to know about Triple Helix. Helix and what, uh, what, what is it any good is it not any good I'm going to tell you right now that this is absolutely terrible this is one of the worst tricks that I've ever seen I showed it him and he thought I was joking didn't you you thought I was joking I said hey Ryan let me show you this and what, what did you say that does not fool me and that is pants yeah, he did say it was pants and it didn't fool him, but of course it wouldn't fool you because it wouldn't fool the blind monkey. Now, before we go any further, let's do a performance of this. This is after about a week of me practicing it. I made the gimmick up, which is another bugbear, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, uh, I made the gimmick up. I practiced it for about a week. And um, yeah, uh, this, let's have a look at the performance. Uh, you know, I'm sure if I practiced it a little bit more, I could make it look a little bit smoother. But this is the best you've got. Let's have a look at that right now. I got a deck of cards here. Watch this, right? If I do this, I can make a, a red deck of cards appear. Let me just put those right there. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, can you do it again? Yes, I can. Watch if I do this, I can make another pack of cards appear. I've got three decks of cards. Let's just take the cards out of the case. And uh, well, there's a blue deck in here. That's weird. Let's start with the tricks. Okay, when I say I could probably make it look better if I spent a bit more time working on it, I've spent a week working on it and I don't want to put any more time and effort into this because this is something that I will never, ever perform. First of all, right, let's just talk about why this is so... You, you saw the effect. It's that basically you have a pack of cards, a deck of cards appears, another deck of cards appears, you end up with three decks of cards, you open up the cards, you take the cards out and you go into a routine, right? And all of the trailers that show this routine, they show them standing there making these decks of cards appear and then, and then and, you know, like kind of then going into some of those sorts of routine, right? My first issue with this is this doesn't even come close to being examinable. When you put the deck of cards down on the table that you've just made appear, not only can you not examine it, if the spectators go anywhere near it, they will see what's going on. If the spectators touch it, they will see what's going on. And if you put it down in the wrong angle, and it is very, very angly, they'll see what's going on. Don't think that you can do this um, surrounded, not even, I'd say if at best, at absolute best, 180 degree angle. Uh, because when you put these down here, but the trailer makes it look like it's okay. The trailer makes it look like, boom, I'm putting these decks of cards down here. But you really can't. In fact, even in the instructions when he's explaining how to do this, he actually says, now you want to get rid of this pack of cards very, very quickly. Take it and put it in your pocket because spectators can't touch this. Spectators can't go anywhere near this. To be honest, if spectators are even looking at this, I'm a little bit concerned. Because here's the problem, right? Here's the problem. When you do it right, and if you put the time and effort into it to do it right, it looks impossible. It does look visual. It looks impossible. But it looks so impossible that an average spectator will want to pick up the deck of cards that you've just made appear and look at it. And what happens if somebody touches that deck of cards on the table that you've just made appear, Ryland? Will they be able to examine it? Will they be able to touch it? Exactly. You can't touch it. You can't examine it. So that's my first problem. You'll be in big, 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 Wrap it up. Trouble. Thank you. And he's right. You really will be because you're making these decks of cards appear and it's going to people are going to want to touch them, going to want to examine them and they can't. 
And that's the first problem right there. So you could go, this is an amazing opener. And maybe it is, but you have to put the cards away in the, your pocket so quickly that, that there's, there's, you know, that, they're going to think that there's something dodgy with them. And there are. There is something dodgy with them. Now, the second thing is, my second issue with it is that... Um, it says that it comes ready-made and you get two gimmicks with it that comes ready-made, but you have to spend about half an hour doing some arts and craft on a regular deck of cards. First of all, you have to take a card box and cut this out. Then you have to take print stick and put this part onto this part. Then you have to do this. Then you have to do this. It's about half an hour arts and crafts project. They say it comes ready to work out the box. The gimmicks come ready to work out the box, but the whole thing doesn't come ready to work out the box. It doesn't feel like they're deceiving people on the trailer, but it does feel like they're walking a very fine line uh, because you know and, and, and here's the other thing <laughs> when I watch the guy on the trailer on the on the download do it and by the way it's only a 20 minute download um, in reality it doesn't have to be longer than that because it's a five second trick but it's a 20 minute download when I watch the guy with his gimmick on the on on the trailer it kind of looks a little bit dodgy and you'd reckon that that guy has made it as best as he possibly could for the for the download right when I made this, it doesn't look anything like... Now, I'm not an idiot at making gimmicks. I, I've made gimmicks for the best part of 25 years. And I tried to make this four or five times. I went back and I started again and I started again because each time I made it, when it was made and put together, it looked kind of ropey. And I think that's just how it is because of how the gimmicks are made... It looks really dodgy. It doesn't look like a regular deck of cards. Now, you'll probably get away with that, probably, as long as people aren't too close. If they're as close as Ryland is right now, there's no way that you're going to get away with it. But maybe from a distance or a parlor show, you could probably get away with it. But it doesn't look right. It's just... What, have you got something to add about this? Because you really hated this. When you looked at it, you were like, this is dreadful. I can't tell you I did to swear. I don't swear. Whatever you do, don't swear. It's, the, it's not very good, is it? It's really not very good. It's terrible. Honestly, guys, it's terrible. And it's not even that great of an effect. Like I say, if you get it right and you get it looking absolutely perfect, it's okay. But it's not the sort of thing that dreams are made out of. And you, like I say, even if you get it perfect, the cards can't be examined at all. Um, you have to put them away in your pocket really, really quickly. It doesn't matter how good you make up the gimmick, it's not going to look great. Oh, and when you're left with the regular deck of cards, it's not regular. You're left with the deck of cards that is unexaminable. If you wanted to do something like card and a box or any sort of thing with a deck of cards with a box, you couldn't do that because the card box is gimmicked because you've had to specially make this card box up that's gimmicked. Now, I should say that Patrick Kern has added on the end a little idea in order to make the card box examinable, uh, which the it's kind of tacked on at the end. Uh, it doesn't fix the other problems with the routine, but it does make the end card box examinable. But in order to do that, you're going to need to buy a few bits and pieces that don't come with the product. And you're going to have to do some more arts and craft just to make the final box examinable. You know what? Could this work in a virtual environment? Probably because you're not going to have people wanting to examine the card box. But even then, it's and, over. And they can't examine it. And they can't examine it. They can't examine anything at all. Nothing other than the deck of cards that you pull out the card box. Nothing is examinable. And I've actually just thought about it. Even with the Patrick Cunn thing, you can't examine the card box. You can probably look at it more closely. But there's still gimmickry inside the card box. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. And I pretty much guarantee you that this is going to sit in your bottom drawer and you're never going to do this. No working professional that's going out doing gigs will ever do this. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest magician in the world when it comes to audience management. There is no way to manage an audience to a point that you can stop them from looking at these card boxes, which are so heavily gimmicked. And, and, and as I say, the routine is so visual that they're going to want to pick it up and have a look at it. Now, I've looked on a couple of forums and I know the creators have said, well, you know what? We were doing this in Blackpool over and over again and people were buying them left, right and centre. Do you know why people were buying them left, right and centre? I didn't see you at Blackpool, by the way. And I went around every single dealer a hundred times. I never saw you at Blackpool. But you know what people like buying at Blackpool? People like buying toys. It's why every single dealer that's at Blackpool, if they want to sell their product to somebody, they'll go, hey, let me show you how this works. Because magicians like gimmickry. They like it when they see a toy that they can play around with. And that's what this is. 
is. You like it, don't you? That's what this is. This is a toy that people can play around with. I'm not surprised that you sold loads of them at Blackpool because a magician would look at this and go, oh, that's really clever. But I'm willing to bet that most of the magicians that put it, bought it at Blackpool weren't fooled by it. I'm guessing, I'm guessing most magicians at Blackpool knew that if they picked up that pack of cards off the table, they couldn't touch it or examine it. I reckon they just bought it because it looked pretty cool and they wanted to play with it. But no magician would ever do this, ever. I don't even think virtual magicians will do this. There's way better ways of doing this. There's way better ways of doing this. Look into the Mark Sitcher's Dental Act and get inspiration from Mark Sitcher's Dental Act where you can produce four packs of cards immediately. Look at Michael Kaminskas and Flat Pack. Look at anything like that. Look at the different deck productions. Read Carnacopia by John Carney. Don't waste your money on a, on a, on a trick that is at... Go, we haven't done this for a while. Go get the bin. Go get the bin. I'm absolutely, completely, and totally offended by this. Ryland, I am giving this 0%, and I'm giving you a warning from Magic TV that this is not a commercial routine. This is a routine that you're never going to do, and I don't care what the creator says. There is absolutely no way to create this gimmick and put this gimmick together to make it look anything like absolutely what it is, which is a big, steaming, fat, dirty turd. It jumped out. Pick it up and put it in the bin for me. <laughs> I wasted 35 quid on that. What are you giving it? Could have bought you a Lego set for a what billion, I spent on that. Trillion, trillion, billion, billion, trillion, billion, trillion, minus percent. Exactly what he said. Don't buy it. Please don't buy it. I don't even know if you can put that with zeros on. I'll figure it out. Why? Don't worry about it. Okay, so review number two, we have Paul Halas's especially wild, ESP, surely wild, um, marked by mere yidded magic. Now, um, this has just been re-released as far as I'm aware. Uh, this has just recently come on uh, a few different dealers' brand new product list, including Alakazam Magic. Um, but this is, uh, a, it's, it's a very interesting trick. It's, it's a packet trick, and everyone knows I love packet tricks, but it's, a, it's like a wild card. Uh, like a Peter Kane style wild card mixed with ESP symbols, which gives you like a two phase approach to it. The first phase feels like an ESP style mentalism routine. And then the second phase goes into a wild card routine. It sounds weird, right? I'm going to get you to perform it. Is that all right with you? Yeah. I'm going to get right to perform it and then we'll talk about what we think about it. Right, Daddy? Yes, mate. I've got 10 ESP symbols. No, not 10 ESP symbols, 10 cards. With ESP symbols on? Yes. Okay, okay. Five ESP symbols, so two sets. Okay, cool. Two sets of ESP symbols. Okay, cool. Okay, and we're going to share them out. Okay. So a circle for you. Okay. And a circle for me. Got it. And a cross for you and a cross for me. Wave your lines for you and wave your lines for me. A square for you. And a square for me. A star for you and a star for me. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. Now I need to take all five of these cards without looking at them and give them a shuffle. Give them a good mix up. Yeah. Without looking at them. Yeah. Okay, I have no idea which one's where. Cool. Okay. So now spread them back out. Any order? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm Now, so I I want you to pull two cards towards us. Uh, what, the face down ones or the face up ones? Face up ones. Okay, these two. Okay, so we're going to get rid of these ones. Yeah. Okay, pull one card towards us again. We're going to get rid of that one. Yeah. So we're left with a star. Yep, we are, yeah. Okay, so pick... One, two, three, four, or five. Two. Two. Okay. Pick it up. Okay. Put these away. Now, is there any chance that could be a star? Not now, a I chance. Remember that you shuffled them. No way. No way. No way. No way. Until I snap. That's incredible. How did you do that? Tell me. I was cheating. You're cheating. Yeah, there, ne there never was 10 ESP symbols. What do you mean? There never was 10. Yes, there were. I saw them. No, there were. There weren't five. There was only one what? ESP symbol. There was only one. Look. 
there's only ever one. What? There's only one kind of ESP symbol. That is amazing. So right, that was that was a great performance. Now, what I really like about this is I'm, I'm a big. They all turn into stars. They all turn into stars. Exactly. I'm a big believer in. You okay? I'm a big believer in hook lines, and you know I love the hook line of Hey, you know what? I'm 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 a magician, but I can also do mind reading. Let me show you. And you kind of do this routine, and they think that you've done mind reading, and you go, Well, would you like to know how it works? I'm not a mind reader. I'm a magician. I just made you think that you saw different symbols, while in reality they were all stars. Let me show you what I mean. And and the first phase kind of builds up the second phase. Uh, it's really really nice. Now, is it easy to do? Yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, it, what moves does it use? It uses a glide mainly, doesn't it? I mean, it's not the most difficult routine in the world. But here's the thing, actually. It's, in essence, it's a wild card routine. So uh, Ryland used like a glide, which is exactly... Ryland did this exactly as the instructions tell you to do it. However, if you have a wild card routine that you already do, and maybe you're using a Hammond count and you're using, uh, you know, Mexican turnovers or maybe you're using false turnovers or double lifts, if you want to do more of a slow motion Peter Kane style wildcard routine, you can actually do that. I quite like the way that the instructions tell you to do it because the blow off comes very, very quickly after the first phase. Um, you threw in the magician's choice or the equivoke, didn't you? You, yeah. you put the idea in of adding the magician's choice there. So the, the, and it's designed to be done to two people. So uh, one person picks the star and then the second person um, picks the star as well. You don't have to do it that way. How it's done in the instructions is they go, right, okay, I think you're going to pick that one. More of like an open prediction. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you saw is what you got. Uh, it, it, rather than use the table, but you don't need to use the table. If you use the different handling for the wild card phase, you could do it in the hands, a bit like the Assy Win style wild card routine or the Tommy Wonder style wild card routine. So it could be done in the hands. Um, but to be honest, you don't need a close up pad. It's, it's the sort of thing that would work really well if you're doing some bar magic or, you know, when you're doing mix and mingle. It also work really well in a virtual show if you've got the camera straight down on the mat and you're getting people to name a card and then you've got, you, you know, you've got this wild card phase. I think that's really good. So uh, what's the reset like? How long does it take to reset? 20 seconds. About 20 seconds. Uh, it's not examinable at the end, is it? But mm -hmm. what you do at the end is the way that you do it but is all the... people don't want to examine. I don't think they do, no, I think they don't because you've seen backs all the way through the routine, you've seen backs, you've seen faces. I, I think it's perfect for virtual as well. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I really do as well. I think it's really nice because they're going to have the freedom of choice because there's no force. So they've got freedom, you don't need to force anything on them, but then you've got that super visual moment at the end afterwards as well. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I, the way that it's done is that the, you're showing a lot of backs and at the end, if they go to pick anything up off the table, they're going to get a card with a back on it because there's only like a couple of cards that aren't, haven't got backs on them. Um, so it's routined really, really well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really nice. You know, I like it. I, like I say, I've got a soft spot for packet tricks. What you saw Ryland do there is is what the trick is it's a really great trick um if you need another packet trick in your life this is a really really good one if you do mentalism this could be a decent bridge from mentalism to magic and you know i know that some people don't like mixing mentalism and magic if you've got you want to hear someone's opinion on that go watch the patrick redford interview he goes into depth about that uh i have no problem with it if you're doing like more of a mentalism or mental magic style routine this might be a nice transition into more pure magic um yeah i like it i'm gonna i'm gonna do it it's definitely going to my packet trick set um i'm going to play around with the handling and maybe add a few phases but uh yeah i'm going to give it 90 percent what about you 98 percent. you're really not going with the hundreds a lot these days are you okay so it's 98 percent. but you like it yeah. you're going to do it for your youtube channel yeah cool so 98 percent from ryland uh are you going to do it for your youtube channel i've technically done it oh you mean for a magic live absolutely this is going to go on a magic live um, yeah, so 98% from him, 90% from me. It's a really good routine. If you like what you saw Ryland do, that's the trick. So next up, we've got a routine which is a brand new routine marketed uh, by Quentin Reynolds, who is an incredible mentalist and kids entertainer, uh, Quentin Reynolds. And um, it's, it's now available. I think it's exclusive through Practical Magic and it's a kids routine, although 
It's the sort of thing that you can actually do um, in, a, in a sort of a parlor show as well, if you routined it correctly. Although the presentation and everything that comes with it is You're designed for kids. You're supposed to be talking about this after. Oh, I'm very sorry. You you just want to perform the trick, don't you? Yeah. Ryland absolutely loves this. So, uh, Ryland, you've actually done this in a virtual show, haven't you, for me, when you helped me with the virtual kids yeah. show. He actually did this for me. Um, I'll, I'll let him perform it for you. So we're going to perform this. Ryland's going to perform this, show you a full performance of what it would look like in a kids show, and then we'll talk about it. I've got two empty boxes, and one of them's got a red ball in, so now that one's empty. Okay, so two empty boxes and a red ball. Okay. So the idea of the trick is I'm going to put the red ball in here and it's going to appear in here when you say go. So let's have a practice all saying go. Shout go. Three, two, one. Go! Good. Just a little bit louder. Three, two, one. Go! Okay, perfect. So I'm going to put the red ball in here and now you shout go. Go! And ta da! That's not red, that's green. It's green. <laughs> that is green, not red. Look, we'll try it with green then. We'll try it with green. Okay, shout go! Go! And yay! It's yellow! I don't, I don't know why that's yellow. That shouldn't be yellow. It, it's not, it's green! What do you mean it's green? It was green! No, it's not, it's yellow. The box, look in the box, show me the box. Show you the box? Yes! It's only got the yellow one in. Look! <laughs> look, so there is no green. It's green! It's green! Ah! <laughs> I told you it was green. Yeah. Look, we'll try with the green then. Okay, shout, go! Go! No. Shout go even louder. Go! And it's worked. Ta-da! That's blue! No. That's, I don't know. We'll try it with blue. Shout go! Go! And ta-da! <laughs> it's yellow! Okay, we'll do it with yellow then. Shout go! Go! Oh, why did you shout grow? That's very bad. Grow? Why did you say grow? I didn't say grow. Yes, you did. You said grow. Which means you made the red ball grow. Well, I suppose that's very impressive. Give yourself a tap on the back. Okay, so that's the routine. Really good performance, Ryan. Well done for that. It kind of reminds me of a little bit like a chop cup, mixed with a multiplying balls, mixed with stratosphere, uh, with a jumbo sponge ball finale. It's really, really cool. It's a method that I've never seen before. It allows you via black art to show that this is empty the whole time. And I've got to Hang on, let me show them. And you can literally just make balls appear anytime you want to. And very, very quickly, you can make balls change and you can show it empty every single time and you can produce balls. Uh, it's a really nice uh, prop, it really is. And at the end, you can show it empty. No, right, not, not right now. You can show it empty and you can make the, uh, the sponge ball appear as a final load. And what's nice about the final load is it's actually built into the box, isn't it? So the final load there has been there from the very, very beginning. Correct, yeah? yeah? So the final load, that sponge ball has been there from the very, very beginning. Now, how difficult is this to do, Ryan? Um, tell them, not me. Mm, it might hurt your pinky a bit, but that's, that's it. <laughs> it might hurt your pinky a bit. Yeah, you are having to fiddle around with things. So we can't explain yeah, what, yeah. obviously. But, it um, really hurts me. What's really nice is there's only one moment in the routine where you're actually palming anything, uh, which is when the blue ball appears. You were actually palming the blue ball, weren't you? Um, however, however, I know a lot of kids entertainers aren't very good at uh, sleight of hand, uh, nothing against that, that's absolutely fine, but a lot of kids entertainers I know, they shy away from props where any palming's done at all, uh, not everyone, but a few do, uh, you don't have to actually use that face, so you don't have to actually have that blue ball appear, you can just use the other three balls, because the nice thing is it is self-contained, so you're in control of switching the balls and producing the balls, uh, literally at will. Now, the other thing that's nice about this is if you have a table and you're having the thing, it, you can operate this whole thing one-handed. 
So, if, so you could actually do this really nicely, and I don't think you've thought about this, but you could do this really nicely as a puppet routine. Because uh, one thing that people who do puppets a lot, they, they're always looking for new routines for their puppets, and it has to be something that you can do one-handed because your other hand's operating your puppet. Well, this routine, you can make a ball appear, you can make a ball disappear, you can, you can change the color of a ball, you can do all of that, you can make the final load appear, and you can do it all one-handed. So if you have a puppet, this is a great prop to use alongside a puppet because it allows most of the routine to be one, uh, done one-handed. The other thing is, once you know how this routine works, you can play around with the handling a little bit, can't you? I mean, you yeah. can do other stuff with it. And you can play around with the balls. Yeah, I like the idea of having two of these. and have, Imagine doing this. Imagine having two of these and having them change places. So you have two boxes, which you show empty. You put a green one in that box. You put a yellow one in this box. You give a little shake, and when you tip them out, they've changed places. And you could do like a multiple thing like that if you had two of them. So there's a lot you can do with it the routine that's written up in the instructions and by the way there's not a download there's not a dvd uh it's literally just written instructions but the routine that's explained in the instructions by quentin um is the routine that uh, that ryland did right there right down to the palming and everything um i like it what uh, what do you think of it because you performed it you've actually performed this in front of an audience as well so give me the ball tell them what you think, think what, what were the reactions like yeah good yeah I do like the moment where it was kind of like, uh, go, oh no, you said grow, and then you pull the big one out like that. No. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of audience participation in there. There's a lot of moments where I, I noticed you put the look no see in there where it's kind of like, no, it's not yellow, it's not yellow, look, it's green, that sort of moment. That wasn't in the instructions, you included that as well, whatever it was, sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really like this. If you're a kid's show performer, and we know because you've done it, it works really well virtually because it's, it's really visual. You can see this very, very easily across Zoom, absolutely no problem. It's easier than a chop cup. You can do this with no palming at all, and the reactions are great. And it will work for younger kids because of how colorful it is, but it'll also work for older kids as well because it is a very visually deceptive routine. They won't have a clue how it's done. And if you are somebody who performs for adults, um, you know, I do think this is something that you could routine together and you could put a nice stage piece together for a parlor show or something. And it's a very intriguing plot, a very intriguing prop, sorry. So yeah, I really like it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what? I might have a go at doing this. I really like this. I'm gonna give this 95%. What about you? 99%. 99% from the Kid Magician, 95% from me. It's another winner. Well done, Quentin Reynolds. You can get it from Practical Magic. So the next and final routine that we're going to be looking at today is something that I was actually really excited to be looking at, which is colourful. And this is another thing, like the uh, routine we looked at at the beginning, colourful is another gives you an idea of what he thinks of it. Colourful is another uh, routine that people have been talking about. It's got a lot of hype. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, look, let me, at least done that with you. let me at least perform it first, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to perform the routine first of all, because you've probably seen a lot of hype about it. Let's perform it first of all, talk about what we think about it, and then we'll go into, uh, yeah, then we'll talk about what we think about it. Right, okay, right, I have a pack of 52 playing cards, all right, buddy? Yeah. Uh, 52 cards, they're all there, they're all different, is that fair? Yeah. Good stuff. Now, um, obviously, all these cards are different, um, and you are going to get to have any one of these cards, all right? Yeah. So what's gonna happen here is, uh, I'm gonna riffle my thumb down the deck, all right? So I'm gonna go down the deck with my thumb like this, you're gonna say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Yeah. That's the card. I'm gonna give you a peek, peek at this, I'm gonna look away. Can the camera see that there, sir? Yeah. Can the camera see the card? Yes. Brilliant stuff. So I'm gonna leave the card down in the middle. And I'm going to try and figure out what your card is. Now, most magicians, what they'll do is they'll go through the cards until they find your card. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to use this King of Hearts to find your card. I'm just going to cover up your card. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Watch. I'm just going to cover up the card and rub. And as I do, you can actually see that that card right there turns red. But not only that card, every single card in the pack turns red except for one card. And one card only, and the one card that hasn't turned red is your Ace of Clubs. Was that your card? Yes. Boom. So that was a full performance of, of, of Colourful. Now, Colourful itself is like a 19-minute download. So it's not a very long routine. And the first 10 minutes explain to you how the gimmick works, 
what to do with it. And then the last nine minutes talk about uh, what you can do with it. And the one routine that they really promote to you with this is like a color changing deck, which is the routine that I showed you. Now, the first issue I have with this is that on the trailer, it talks about how you can make cards vanish, how you can make cards disappear, how you can make cards change, but they don't explain that on the download. Now, it's fairly obvious how to do that. It's fairly obvious using the gimmick. Once you understand how the gimmick to, how you, once you understand how you use the gimmick to make one card change color, it's also easy to see how you could apply it to anything else. But I think it's a shame that they advertise this with the trailer, making out that, oh, you can do this and this and this, and then not offer any instructions on routines. And that's my problem with a lot of tricks that come out these days. They don't offer you a routine. What they give you is they give you a trick and one moment of magic, and they rush the download out, and they don't bother. You know, in the old days, you had like, I remember when I uh, put my Splitcoin DVD out, there were like 15 routines. When I put my routines out with Attack of the Bag, there were 35 routines. And I spent a long time thinking about it. And, and now you see a lot of routines come out, a lot of tricks come out and it's like a really quick download. Here's one trick to get you started. And I think that, you know, especially if you put it in the trailer, you should at least put together some sort of routine that people can learn because a lot of people buying this are going to be newer magicians and they might not be able to put those routines together. You should really be offering that routine to them. By the by, that's my first issue with it. But my second and biggest issue with it is it's a prop that is not needed at all. Now, what it allows you to do in reality is have a card, let, in, in the context of the color changing deck, for example, have a blue deck and just wave a card over it and it changes red. Now, the problem I have with this is if you do this with a card and it changes, and it does look visual, it does look visual. And when you see how the gimmick works, it is very clever how it does what it does, isn't it, right? I mean, you looked at the gimmick and although you hated this trick, you did like the way that the gimmick did what it did. You were like, oh, that's fun. From a toy point of view and a playing around with the gimmick point of view, it's very cool. And magicians will play with this and go, look at what it does, it's really cool. But in reality, let's just think about it for a second. Let's use the context of the color changing deck. When you take that card and you pull it back like this and the card changes red, Immediately, people are going to want to look at this card. They cannot look at this card. They cannot take this card off you. Some routines, if there's something not examinable, it's not really too much of an issue because clever routining has made it so it doesn't feel like it needs to be examinable. In this case, when you do that and that card turns red, that's so impossible. People are going to want to look at this card. You can't even flash the other side. You can't do anything with it. Even if, and what the gimmick will allow you to do is go back and make it turn blue again. Even if you do that, now you can't examine the card again. You can't examine the top of the deck. You can't examine this card. You can't examine the top of the deck. You can't examine anything. So you have to put this card away, which wouldn't be a problem if there was no other way to achieve this effect, but there is. It's called an Erdnaze change. I'm gonna perform the same routine again that came with the instructions of Colorful, and all I'm going to do is substitute the colourful gimmick for an Erdnaze change. Right. Ryland? Yeah. I'm going to show you something with a pack of playing cards, okay? Yeah. Now, there's 52 cards in the deck. Yeah. And what most magicians will do when they have you pick a card is they'll they'll shuffle through the cards like this and they'll have you say stop. And if you said stop there, you get the five. If you said stop there, you get the jack, the king. You get the idea, right? Yeah. I'm going to actually do something a little bit different, okay? I'm going to get you to pick a card in a different way. I'm going to run my thumb down the deck. So as I run my thumb down the deck, just say stop. Stop. That's great. That's your card. I'm going to give you a peek at it. Can you see that on the cameras there, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah? Can you see it, right? Yeah. I'm going to leave it down in the middle. Fair? Now watch. To find your card, all I have to do is make your card stand out. And the easiest way to make your card stand out is just to rub the pack and have every single card in the deck turn red, except for one card and one card only, one card that hasn't turned red. Turn it over. Is that your card? And everything's examinable. Boom. Now, think about this. The only difference between those two routines is with Colourful, I use the card and then I put the and card down. Go. And, and Well, yeah, but I, I use the card. Whilst with that routine that I just did, I waved my hand over and the card and changed. And there was no gimmick. With the, routine that, with the routine I just did, there was no gimmick. Yes, there was an extra red back card in there, which at the end of the routine I can palm off, but there's no gimmick. I don't have to worry about that card being put down there because as soon as I wave my hand over, my hand's shown empty. And I'm in the same position as I was 
in the colourful routine, other than I don't, I don't, this, this card over here is no longer an issue. I can still do exactly the same routine with an Erdnaze change instead of using a really expensive gimmicked card. That's my issue with this. It, it, there is nothing you can do with this gimmick that you can't do with either a double lift or an Erdnaze change or a top change. There is nothing that you can do. And you could argue, well, look, it's so visual when you wave, that, when you wave the card over. And yes, it is visual, but you're thinking like a magician. To a layman, it's just as visual if you wave your hand over and you do, an, uh, you do, a, you do a, a change. Or you just shake the pack and you do a pass some sort of midnight shift or something and the card just changes. However you want to do it. There are way, there are millions of other ways of making this more visual without actually using the gimmick. But then you don't have to have a gimmick. You don't have to have the deck set up because also when the gimmicks are on top of the deck, it does look a little bit bulky at the top. You can get away with it, but it does look a little bit bulky. This way, there's nothing bulky about it. Secondly, it's very easy to palm off one extra card. If I'm doing a color changing deck where I've got one extra card, it's a lot more difficult when I've got like three or four gimmicks on the top of the deck because there are three gimmicks that's required for this. There's the card you pull back and then there's two other gimmicks as well. And it's a lot more difficult to palm all of those gimmicks off to clean up. And the other thing is, from a routining point of view, if you actually think about this, if you do an Erdnaze change, every card turns red except for the selection. If you use the colourful thing, that card never turns red. So what do you do if a layman says, well, turn that one red as well? What can you do? Well, you can't because that's gimmicked up to the halt. But you probably won't get to that point anyway because they can't touch it and examine it. It's not examinable. It's not an instant reset. It's not even close to an instant reset. Half of the stuff they say that you can do on the trailer, although you can do it, they don't explain how to do it. And they, it's, it's like a 17 minute rush download. I, I just I, I just don't see the point of this trick. I do not see the point of this trick. What they have done is they have created a gimmick that is designed for one reason and one, re well, two reasons, actually. One is designed to solve a problem which doesn't exist. Oh, I know. Let's, let's, let's come up with a way of, of, of changing a card by waving another card over it, said no magician ever. Th th there's, no, there's no need for it. It's solving a problem that doesn't exist. And all they want to do is put out a really cool trailer so that the magicians that look at it go, oh, that's a really fun toy. Let me go and buy this. And they buy it. And this is another routine. I agree what he's saying. This is another routine that's going to end up. No, please don't, because you're going to get annoyed. It's going to end up in your bottom drawer. It's going to end up in your bottom drawer. I asked him if he wanted to do this on his, because we're filming after this for your YouTube channel, aren't we? Yeah. And I said, do you want to do colourful on the YouTube channel because it does look really cool? And what did you say? No, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He'd rather do a nerd days change. And that, therein lies the problem. If the, right, okay. If you took colourful, I can't remember how much it is, let's say it's 30 quid, and you bought, you took the, the stupid debt production, triple, double helix or whatever the hell it is. If you spent, 70 quid on those two tricks. You could go and take that 70 quid and buy a really awesome magic book. A really awesome magic book with 30 or 40 routines in that will be way better value for money than the absolute trash that these two routines are offering you. Because what will happen is you'll buy Colourful, you'll buy Double Helix, you'll take them, you'll look at them, You'll play around with them for a couple of nights and then you'll th chuck them in your bottom drawer and five years later when you're cleaning out your stuff, you'll go into your bottom drawer and you'll go, what's this? I can't remember this. Bin! And you'll never do it again and you'll chuck it out at some point down the road. Nobody is going to do either one of these two routines. And don't come back to me with the whole, well, it's going to be really good for uh, virtual shows because it looks really visual. Learn a colour change. Learn an Erdnaze change. Learn a pass. Something like that. Buy a book. This is trash it's complete and total trash and i'm sick to death of routines and tricks being released that i spend my money on it's not like this shit get mm, shouldn't have said that shouldn't have said that really sorry yeah it's not like this stuff gets sent to me and, and i get it for free i'm spending my money on this and and it's just an absolute complete and total waste of money I wish that producers of magic tricks would think a little bit before releasing absolute rubbish. I really do. Right, I'm going to go for my home horse now because this is not a Friday night rant. What do you think? Or have I pretty much covered it? <laughs> pretty much covered it? What are you going to give it? 
I'll tell you what I'm giving it. I'm giving it 15%. And that's being generous, just because it's a nice little 100%. gimmick to play with. In all honesty, if you buy it, you might spend a couple of nights playing with it and go, oh, this is quite nice. Look at how it does this. This is right nice. You might even try to convince yourself into actually saying, I'm going to use this in the real world until you go and do it once when we're allowed to gig again and you go and do it and you realise it's just that. You might as well take that 70 quid and put it in the bin. What are you going to give it? 1%. 1%. 1%. Really? Oh, it's really offended you, hasn't it, that trip? 1% from him, 15% from me, avoid at all costs. And that's another review show in a bag. And again, that's another review show in a bag. It is another review show in the bag. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sorry there isn't that much inspiring in terms of the products there. There's a really nice packet trick, really nice kids routine, but please avoid the other two. Oh, you'd love that, don't you? Please avoid the other two at all costs. Uh, I hope I've saved you guys some money uh, if you've managed to watch this review before buying them. Uh, and if you like, please leave a comment down below. We read every comment, don't we? So please leave a comment down below. If you want to see more videos like this, like the video. Also, go check out his YouTube channel. Uh, you can find him at... The Kid Magician. The Kid Magician. Are you going to be doing that on your YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So check him out at The Kid Magician. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back again next Wednesday with another magic review. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. See you again. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.